How can complex emotions and mental health issues be represented in animated short films? With the use of the case studies La Noria, directed by Carlos Baena, and Happiness by Steve Cutts, I will show that animation can go deeper than the path it was initially expected to follow, that its purpose goes beyond the younger audience or to serve the comedy genre, and that in the short form it can give valuable and touching lessons. I chose these two case studies because they both show simplicity in explaining complex sentiments in their own distinct way, which shows how animation can take a darker route and appeal to adults and all kinds of personalities. In the short film Happiness, we are immersed in a world inhabited by rats, where selfishness and greed are the keys to happiness. Why rats? Possibly by their long acquired symbolism of disease and skill to survive in a vast range of conditions which is a metaphor for the way humans live in society, always wanting more and never being fully satisfied with what they have. As Moss argues, happiness feels intolerably elusive for many of us. Upon approach, its particles loosen and suddenly it becomes out of reach, even though it's all around you. In the case of the animated short film La Noria, we follow the story of a kid experiencing loss and depression, demonstrated by his desire to finish building a ferris wheel but having a broken main piece and monsters tormenting him. The choice of these stories being told in the short form is due to its bigger impact on the audience. A feature film without dialogue of rats imitating human habits would be boring, and people would soon grow tired of it. But as a short film, it works, in a way that during those four minutes, the audience is grabbed, and despite understanding the metaphor right away, wants to see what will happen next, the extremes it can go to to follow this figurative happiness which in the live action form wouldn't be as appealing. We wouldn't see limbs flying in the air in a fighting scene as something funny, but rather disturbing. One aspect that both these case studies have in common is the lack of dialogue. And as Raskin said, minimizing the verbal component, a generally desirable effort with regard to story design in the short fiction film, does not mean neglecting the importance of building sound producing events into the story. So despite the absence of dialogue, sound in these short films is still very present and a big indicative of where the story is going and how the audience is supposed to feel when watching the accompanying images. La Noria uses the diegetic sound of the music box in the beginning of the film to immerse us in that depressive, melancholic mood that is going to be recurrent throughout the film. When the non-diegetic music comes in, it's the same song, but played by an orchestra, perhaps to show us that there's more beyond that room and that music box, but we should look at the bigger picture and imagine a world beyond that place. When the music box stops and we see the boy struggling to make the broken piece fit in the wheel, leaving him to listen to his own memories, it shows loss of harmony and serenity because the kid is frustrated and his emotions took over. So the ease of sound here relates to the boy's emotions and need to distract his mind with something other than his memory. That same song comes back in the end when the boy is facing the monsters and taking steps forward, as a reminder of how he felt in the beginning, but still acknowledging the changes made in perspective and mindset, and how far he's come in picking himself up and finding light in the darkest of moments. The classical song Habanera, used throughout happiness, is very repetitive, which relates to the vicious cycle represented in the short film in the long and exhaustive search for happiness. Sure, there are moments where the song gets louder and the action is more exciting, such as the fight scene in the store or when the same song gets distorted when the rat is drunk. But we haven't left that repetitive cycle. The only time the song changes is when the rat is on drugs and the morning mood plays in a magical Disney-ish sequence to show how altered he is and how the pills affected his mindset, giving him a momentary sense of relief from getting out of the cycle he was stuck in. But even then, the animation style changes as well, showing us that he's not himself in that moment and not long after, we're back in the same boring, grey, rainy city with the same song playing in the background. A scene like this couldn't be as aesthetically striking in the live action form as it is in animation. It has a sense of dark comedy in which you're able to both chuckle at the sight of a high rat and think about drug abuse as a serious issue. Happiness gives us an insight on society and how individuals are too focused on finding happiness in the shallow things like money, material things and social media, being the main message how selfish and self-centered people, or in this case rats, can be. There are some moments of comedy stuck in the deep message of the short to relieve the feeling of guilt when the audience relates to the message, such as when he's in the elevator in the sequence of following the money and waits until it goes up and stops to follow it again, which can be a metaphor for the lack of value money actually has and how ridiculous we look when we're blinded by the thirst of it. 
In relation to the objects and their emotional connotation, the two films engages with different perceptions. When in happiness, the material things the rat acquires are meaningless and a symbol of greed, and in the end, being the pursuit of money, what makes him fall in the trap. In La Noria, the ferris wheel in the broken central piece gain an emotional connotation. Svankmeyer said that objects conceal within themselves the events they've witnessed, and in this case, the missing piece of the wheel is a symbol of a broken heart, a piece that doesn't seem to fit in anymore, and doesn't work as it used to, due to his dad having passed away and him feeling just as broken as that piece. His features and telling facial expressions make us dive deeper in the story and want the outcome to be positive. His gleaming big eyes show extreme sadness and fear, which would be a hard thing to get from a child actor if this story were to be told in a live action form. When he takes a step forward and faces the monsters instead of running away from them, he sees them opening the way instead of chasing him, and he observes that the monsters were preparing something unexpected for him, which is a depiction of immense personal growth. The use of animation to impersonate the boy's fears in the form of monsters is a great way to celebrate animation's unique characteristics of storytelling. With monsters of different shapes, all terrifying in their own way, mental health is impersonated and externalized in a way that the audience understands that, even through pain and trauma, you can make something beautiful. Right before facing the monsters, there is a very powerful scene where the boy is surrounded by mirrors and in a fast circular motion, staring at himself and the monsters as if they were one, the sound intensifies, giving us a claustrophobic and uncomfortable feeling, and when he screams, finally releasing himself from the overwhelmingly controlling thoughts, the mirror breaks in slow motion, and the boy drops to the floor sobbing. This is quite a moving scene that engages the audience. A spectator is engaged when something claims and holds his or her attention, and even more so if the film invokes empathy toward characters. In the sense of moving the viewers, the choices in character building play a big role. Like the monster with no inside being a metaphor for feeling empty from all the pain that kid is experiencing. We see him face to face with that monster, understanding that they aren't that different after all, and that there is a reason for that monster to be frustrated giving us a sense that the boy is starting to understand his emotions and learning how to tame them. Although the core of these two shorts is quite different and complex, the stories and choices in storytelling are, in both case studies, simple and easy to understand, still leaving room for the audience to then step away and think about what they've experienced, having their own reflexive process of what the metaphors might have meant and relating to the messages the films portrayed. Like Raskin said, Simplicity enhances the possibility for depth. A story is simple and clear, allowing the viewer time and space to reflect upon and participate in the construction of the story. 